Hey guys, welcome to Brad's Collection. I'm Brad. I'm Brad from Brad's Toy Show. And we got an interview here. This is a press conference with Bam Bam Terry Gordy from the Pro Wrestling Illustrated, September 1991. So, when the, in this video, I'm going to be Bill Apter and Terry Gordy because there's four different people, while Braden is Craig Peters and Bob Smith, two other people that entered, was in the interview. So here we go. When the loss occurred, Japanese fans were stunned. For more than a year, the brutal team of Terry Gordy and Steve Williams had dominated the country's tag team competition. For the second time, Bam Bam and Dr. Death held the All Japan and PWF tag team titles, and they were disseminating all their opposition. So when Gordy and Williams were defeated by Dan Spivey and Stan Hansen for both titles on April 18th in Tokyo, it made headlines all over the continent. To most wrestlers, such defeat would be devastating. To Gordy, however, it just meant it was time to hit the road again. The 11-year veteran flew to New York, where he appeared at UWF television tapings. His scheduled bout was rematch against veteran Don Morocco, but the match never really got started. Before the bell, Gordy ripped at his Hawaii foe, and Morocco responded in kind. The referee called for a double disqualification, and almost immediately prompting both competitors to brawl uncontrollably throughout the Pennsylvania Hotel. To most wrestlers, such an outcome would be disappointing, but for Gordy, it left him with a smile on his face. Ever since his days as an original member of the fabulous Freebirds, Gordy has traveled to the ends of the earth looking for what he terms as a good fight. More often than not, he gets exactly what he's looking for. Editor-in-Chief Craig Peters, Senior Editor Bill Apter, and Associate Editor Bob Smith conducted an interview with the Burley, Tennessee native following his brief but wild bout with Morocco in New York. Despite the conclusive verdict, in his match, Gordy seemed to be in an especially good mood until the hard, que hard questions started flying his way. Bill Apter. Terry, you're in good spirits for a man whose match only lasted one minute, ten seconds. How can you be so happy after a double disqualification? Then Gordy responds, I've known you more than ten years after, and you still don't know how, many, how my mind works, do you? I may not have pinned that fossil Morocco tonight, but I guarantee you that if you walk over to the other dressing room and ask him, he'll tell you he was in the fight of his life. You see, Morocco's been strutting around in UWF like he's the cock of the walk, the toughest dude ever created. He's dead wrong about that. I'm the toughest dude in this sport, and Steve Williams isn't far behind. Craig Peters. It's, it's always amazed me how you and Steve have gotten along during the past year. It was only three years ago that you two had a horribly violent feud in WCW. Well, that's how you learn to respect a person. If you recall, there was never a conclusive winner in the feud between Steve and me. We tore the hides off each other. And when it was all over, we just looked at each other and said, Why don't we team up? Smartest decision I've made in a long time. Look at what we've done in Japan. And Bob Smith. It's an outstanding re re record, that's for sure. However, Williams emerged as a finalist in the UWF t TV tournament tonight, and he'll be meeting Bam Bam Bigelow for that belt. What will happen if Steve do does does become the champion? Would you challenge him for a title match? You know, I had a feeling one of you rubes would break up my good mood with a dumb question like that one. Why should I jeopardize my tag team with Steve over a belt? There are things more important than titles, boy. I'm loyal to Doc, and I like to think he's loyal to me, too, Bill Apter says. You haven't been very loyal to your former Freebird mates, though. You haven't teamed with Michael Hayes or Buddy Harder Roberts for a long time. It's my business who I team up with after. Circumstances just aren't right for a Freebird reunion, so why bother? Hey, I'm still pals with P.S. and Buddy Jack. Together, we were the greatest six-man tag team ever. Much greater than also, also runs like the Von Erichs and the Road Warriors and Dusty Rhodes. We were dominant that all I've wanted to be as a wrestler. Someone who walks in the ring and kicks butt. But Michael and Jimbo Garvin seem to be doing pretty good on their own. And Roberts is enjoying the high life as a retired man. So why should I stick my nose in where it doesn't belong? Peters. Does this mean you'll never be a free bird again? You know, you guys never let me let something come to a rest, do you? I travel to Japan, mortalize all the opposition, opposition there, and win every belt there. But when I come back home, all people want to talk about is free bird this, free bird that. Let it rest, will you? I have new desires and new pursuits, Bob Smith says. 
All right, what are your goals today? Do you plan to return to Japan soon? Does Buddy like Jack Daniels? You bet I'll be back in Japan soon. You know, the fans there are much more educated and astute than American wrestling fans, Bill Apter. How can you put down the fans like that? I'm not putting down nobody. It's just the fans in Japan treat me with the respect that I should be treated with over here. When I walk through the crowd in New York, people scream at me and call me all kinds of foul names. When I walk through the crowd in Japan, the people part like the Red Sea. They put the top wrestlers on a pedestal over there. I feel like an honored celebrity. But when I return to my own country, I get pelted with hot dog buns. It just doesn't make no sense to me. Bob Smith responds. Your reaction to the fan doesn't make a lot fans doesn't make a lot of sense to me. After all, U.S. fans don't want to have much to do with rule breakers. What did I ever do that was so bad? Just because I want to put a few knots in Morocco's head? How can anybody root for that old timer? Anyway, the guy should have been out to pastor years ago, and it just makes my blood boil to see him stroll around in those muscle shirts of his. I may not have a bodybuilder's physique, but I can stuff that guy up one nostril and snort him out the other. If these UWF officials give him enough chances, I'll prove it to you and all these other rubes around the stinking city. Craig Peters says, I do have to give you credit for one, one thing. You do take on the biggest guys around here in the U.S. It's Morocco and Bam Bam Bigelow. In Japan, you'll take on Dan Spivey or Stan Hansen without blinking an eye. I have to admit that you're one of the most fearless competitors I've ever watched. I was told a long time ago that if you let fear eat at you, you're as good as finished before you ever get in the ring. Instead, I don't even think in those terms anymore. I've got more strength and stamina than just about anybody else. So why not just go out there and prove it? Give me the biggest and the baddest, and I'll chew them up and spit them out, Craig Peters says. So what about Hanson and, and Spivey? Are you and Steve planning on winning back your double title? Sure we are. We've been battling those guys for more than six months, and every time we get into a match, all hell breaks loose. They've beaten us twice now, but I really think they just caught up on off days. Bill After says, oh, come on. I think it proves that Spivey and Hanson are just as good as you and Williams are. You know, for someone who's been around for a long time, you sure don't know a hell of a lot. So Hanson and Spivey beat us. Big deal. If you'd seen the match, you'd know that there was such so much confusion in the ring at the time of the pinfall that the little Japanese referee didn't know what the heck was going on. Our loss was a fluke, and we're going to make up for it in spades. Not only will we regain those PWF and All Japan titles, but we'll beat up those guys so bad they'll never be the same, Bob Smith says. I think you've just told us everything about yourself that the fans need to know. You really do love to beat people up don't you? Ain't nothing else like it anywhere. You know, I've been a pro wrestler since I was in my teens. There isn't anything else I ever wanted to do. That's because in this sport, you can just bust people up and get away with it. My father once told me never to let anyone who isn't as good as you walk all over you. I've never forgotten that, and I never, ever let anyone get away with anything. And the bigger the mouth the guy has, the more I enjoy busting it open with a couple of well-placed punches. Williams feels the same way. That's why nobody messes with us. I just wish you guys were wrestlers because I'd drag you smart Alex in the ring and show you a thing or two.